Welcome back. It is Thursday, June 6th in the MLB, and my four favorite picks are on the way. What's going on, everyone? It's Logan from Calling Our Shot. Back again to hopefully make some money today on this fine Thursday. Before we dive into the picks, let's talk about yesterday. Guys, betting baseball is hard. I should, I should not be breaking any news to you. We went two and two yesterday. We are stuck in mediocrity. I absolutely hate it. We can talk about the, the picks, though. We had the Reds in the money line. Oh, my gosh. Reds. I love you so much. Uh, that one that one had me pulling my hair out. Obviously, we needed a miracle uh, finish in that game. And I, what did I say in my analysis? I said the Rockies' bullpen is atrocious. Well, the Reds luckily capitalized on that, and they won a crazy comeback in that one. Ah, I'm so grateful for them because I had, I had a couple bad calls in there. Brewers' team total over. They got shut out. I mean, yeah, I, I no words, just a bad bet. Misread on my part. The total was set to nine. I thought we were seeing some runs. No way. Uh, we we also had the parlay of the day. Now, that one, we we had a half cash in there. We had Volpe to get a hit, and we had Jose Ramirez to get a hit. Volpe got his hit. Uh, R- Ramirez's game was was postponed, so that one voided. So that's why we're we're not as, as you know, even as we want to be on the day. We still lost almost a unit. And then we had the Marlins nerfy. Gosh, I'm so glad that that series is done. I'm, I won't be picking any more uh, year fees than that one. Holy crap. The juice baseballs got wheeled right to Miami, and no, neither of those pitchers knew how to pitch yesterday. It was, it was wild to see. That's not going to deter me, though, because I really do like the picks today. I'm changing it up a little bit. We know we've been mediocre with the game picks. I have a, I have a couple player props I actually do really like today. This change will hopefully spark a, a, a little bit of a roll here. You know, guys, it's been it's been frustrating because we it's like a two and two day, a three and three day before that. Obviously, we gamble to make money, not go even on the day. And we we put ourselves in a hole, you know, earlier in, in the year, and we can't get out of the hole going even. So we're gonna make it back today. And it starts with a giveaway opportunity, actually. I like a little bit of pressure when I'm making these picks. I like a little bit of pressure to perform. And if you've been watching these videos, you you have to be rewarded somehow. And if you've been tailing my pe- my picks, a little bit of frustration. I, I understand that. So a $25 giveaway opportunity is on the horizon today. How do you enter? Go down, comment your favorite bet today. It could be any bet. And I honestly, I don't care if the bet wins. I just want people commenting their favorite plays down below. This is a community after all. My picks are not hitting at 100% clips. Anybody in the community's picks, maybe maybe your, yours are. Let me know down in the comments. But the giveaway opportunity, I'll give away $25 if my picks do not have a winning day. And I have four of them. So do the math. I need to go 3-1 and one or 4-0 and oh to spark to not give away $25 tomorrow. So if you want to go enter the giveaway and you know kind of bet against me a little bit, go ahead and do that. But anyway, I think it's a good opportunity just to post your favorite plays down below because that's what this is. It's a community. My picks are not the end-all, be-all of gambling. If I knew it all, I would not be recording these videos. I would just be sitting back making millions on my own. But I like to share the picks with you because hopefully you guys can see where I'm coming from. And that starts with the parlay of the day. Now, yesterday's cashed. It cashed at only a half value, but it's still cashed nonetheless. I really do like today's parlay of the day. I already do have a couple of hitter ideas that I like in it. Go check that out when it is posted later in the morning on our sponsor, Odds Checker. It will be posted down in the pinned comment. A link will be provided there. And also, if you follow us on Twitter, you can see it there as well. Now, I mentioned player props today because it's a player prop kind of day. And this, this first one, love the value. We're getting a plus value on an outs line. Cal Quantro of the Rockies, over 17 and a half outs. Plus 108 odds on Fandle is your best value. Obviously, when we're picking player props, I want some plus value plays in there. You know, I don't like laying crazy like minus 150-ish juice, which I've seen Twitter cappers do. I will I will say that. That's not typically my philosophy. I don't like to go over minus 130. It's just bad. It, it's bad value bets. And I like the value we're getting on this one to start. Yesterday, the Rockies, we remember that crazy game against the Reds. They only got four and a third innings pitch from their starter, Dakota Hudson. They got absolutely no length from him. They used six bullpen arms yesterday. Your bullpen's coming into this game taxed. How do you, how, how, what sort of performance do you get out of Quantrill? I don't know. The, the man can go out and give up 10 earned runs, but if he goes six innings pitched, we cash this bet. So I don't really care what his stat line looks like. The only number we care about today is innings. And if he goes six of them, we're going to cash this bet at plus value. Quantrill also over this line in every start in May, 
The hit rate is there. In his most re- recent outing, he had a bit of a setback. Nine hits and four and a third innings pitched at the Dodgers. Those types of starts happen, especially against a great offense like the Dodgers. Now, the Cardinals, obviously, they're they're red hot record-wise. They're, they've been winning a lot of games. But you look at them on paper, they're only hitting 231 in their last five games against righties. This matchup is not all that difficult for Cal Quantrill. Playing in a hitter or in a pitcher friendly ballpark, not, not a hitter friendly ballpark in course. Luckily, this one is in St. Louis. This is a spot that I think the Cardinals overlook Quantro a little bit. They're coming off a win in Houston. That's a feel good win, obviously, beating the Astros on the road in Houston. Now you come home. Now you might overlook a pitcher like Quantro. Not he's not one of the in the big time strikeout ace pitchers. He's just a mediocre guy that comes in and eats up innings. And that's what we need him to be. Quantro also pitched contact guy, 71st percentile on ground ball percentage. He's easily able to cruise in this game with a pitch to contact approach. I hope he's just throwing pitches in the zone, not hope, not walking batters, because that's the that's the death of an outs prop is you know just a bunch of inefficient innings. I still look at Quantro. He's he's an efficient guy when he wants to be and when he can be. I still th- think this is a matchup is pretty solid against St. Louis. And also, also the last point of note, do you want to tax your bullpen game one of a series? Already taxed bullpen. Do you want to tax your bullpen in game one of the series uh, to start against the Cardinals? If you're the Rockies manager, I don't really think so. I think you you kind of let Quantrill go out, maybe just eat innings. That's also a possibility. On a bad team like the Rockies, sometimes you are a sacrificial lamb. Sometimes it's just, hey, man, go out and give us six innings. I don't really care you know, what happens. I think we could see that today for Cal Quantra. Love his outs prop over. Now, speaking of an, another prop we like, another pitcher. Now, you guys are, might not like this one. It's Pablo Lopez of the Twins. Under five and a half hits allowed. Minus 125 odds on DraftKings. Slightly juicy on this one. But this is, this is, this is a Logan special. Now, what do I mean by that? It's a nasty contrarian pick. And if you've been following this channel for, or for a few seasons, you know... My biggest success is the nasty contrarian picks, the picks that no one feels good about entering in their bet slip, but they cash at a higher rate. Just I, I don't know why. Does it have to make sense? A couple days ago, the Pirates was a nasty contrarian pick, won that game out right. You see, you you kind of you you'll see my thought process on this one, but I like Pablo Lopez to have a bounce back outing, even though he's facing the red hot Yankees. Obviously, on paper, bad matchup for Pablo Lopez because the last time he faced the Yankees. <sighs> Allowed 10 hits, three earned runs, six in and in it's only six and a third innings pitched. So I actually went de- decent in that game. But the hit parade, oh my gosh. Now I had the first five under in that game. I remember that one. It cashed and it cashed by a miracle because normally when you when you allow 10 hits, you're giving up much more than three earned runs. But Pablo Lopez in that game, he simply did not have it. Over his he's also what I what I like about this one is the hit rate is way on the opposite direction. He's over this line in four straight starts. But today, I think he makes the adjustments necessary. I have a lot of faith in a guy like Pablo Lopez. He's a good pitcher. He is not a rookie pitcher that is just trying to figure it out. Pablo Lopez knows what to do. He knows what he did wrong in that one. And in his start where he allowed 10 hits, his off-speed pitches were just hanging in the middle of the plate, and the Yankees were making him pay. That one was brutal to watch. Again, I dissected that game very, you know, in, in a lot of detail because I had the first five under the first time he faced the Yankees in Minnesota. His pitches were not good at all. They were they were what I what I couldn't even recognize Pablo Lopez being. I was like, man, what are you doing? Throwing him right over the middle of the plate? No, no crap, they're gonna hit him. Lopez is is obviously a solid pitcher, and he's also a regression candidate, meaning that if you look at his stat cast numbers. His 2.99 expected ERA is significantly lower than his 4.84 actual ERA. The problem with Pablo Lopez and doing a deep dive into his stats, he's just, when guys are on base, he's allowing those guys on base to score, especially in runners in scoring position. He's terrible with, with runners in scoring position. That's why he's hovering near a 5 ERA. Obviously, getting those guys on base, that's what we need to avoid today. But you look at the expected batting average. I'm, I'm talking about expected numbers on Pablo Lopez. In the expected batting average, only 224, which lands in the 73rd percentile. Obviously, that's pretty solid for Pablo Lopez. I think he's going to go out and he's going to challenge these Yankees hitters because he's still decent against the righties in the lineup. He's only allowing a 242 batting average to righties, allows a 262 batting average to lefties. 
this line, this line is just to me absolute bait on the over five and a half line or hits allowed. I mean, when you just allow ten to a team, that that just feels free to be like, yeah, sure, surely they'll get six this time around. Look at the Yankees team total too. It's at the four and a half. I think you're getting plus value on the over. Look, man, Bronx Bombers, they're they're clicking right now. They are rolling. But wouldn't it be very baseball like for them to just hit a roadblock today against a pitcher that is very very capable of having a very solid outing? I think so. I think this start is for Azan Lopez to figure out how to command his sweeper and to locate his changeup. Two things that he was not doing in his in his last matchups. He you know he he wasn't getting the sweeper to sweep. He was getting the changeup located in the wrong location. You want that ideally you want that pitch down. You hang a changeup. You know put it right in the middle of the play. Obviously these hitters are going to know what to do with it. Every team has a cool down. That's why baseball is a very tough sport to predict. You have to be a game ahead most of the time. If you if you're trying to follow trends and stuff, it will lead you astray. Lopez could allow five earned runs in this game, but still go under the hits allowed if the Yankees are either piling up the home runs, right? Because you you know you could have four home runs in this one, but still go under six hits allowed. And also if the walks pile up, I just see plenty of ways that this that this cashes. I think Lopez is going to do a lot better job of missing bats. I swear when I watched him pitch in, in, against the Yankees in that one, he was just throwing right into bats. That's just, that's just a, a, a crazy like anomaly in this one. I think Lopez goes under his it's allowed. And if you hate this prop, don't tail it. If you want to fade it, go ahead. I'm just seeing a great Pablo Lopez start on the horizon. It's, how I, it's, it's me calling my shot. That's why this channel is you know my opinions. And that's my opinion in that one nasty pick. But I think it stands a really good chance of cashing. Now let's go on to everyone's favorite part of the, the program. But it has not been good to Nerfy Nation. But we got to get the rock. Even though we had a couple Yerfies in a row, that Marlins series was just not the series to be picking Nerfies in. Like, hand up. That's on me. I, I, won't, I won't touch them anymore because they're not available. And I, I just won't do it. But this one I really do like, and we're going to an earliest start time in this one. Mariners and Athletics, no runs first inning, minus 113 odds on Fandle. So not you're not even getting juiced on this one, which is what I do like to see. And obviously this one starts at 340 Eastern time. So get those bets in if you, if you do want a tail. It's starting early local time. Again, I kind of like these early West Coast start times because sometimes the bats come out a little bit sleepy in this one. And I like the matchup. I think this Nerfy is going to absolutely smack. J.P. Sears starts for the A's. Sears 9-3 and three on Nerfies this year. He's been really solid in the first inning. He started out the year really hot. He's cooled down a little bit in the first inning. But this Mariners team, 26th in first inning runs. This is a team you do want to target the Nerfy against. And then, then we look at the other side. Brian Wu starting for the Mariners. Wu, 5-0 and on Nerfies. He did already face this A's team. He did Nerfy against them. So obviously we like to see that. And the A's, 29th and first inning runs. I think this one stands a really good chance of cashing, unlike the Marlins game that I've been picking Nerfies in, which made you guys, you know, probably rip your hair out like me, right? They were just bad, bad first innings. I think this one stands a good chance of cashing because both these offenses are not that proficient at scoring in the first inning in this one. Nerfie Nation, let's go ahead and fly those flags. Let's let's uh, start the day with a Nerfie cash. I would absolutely love that. But that'll do it for the picks today. We have the parlay of the day. Post it later this morning. Again, check back on that. We have Cal Quantrill over 17 and a half outs. We have Pablo Lopez under five and a half hits, uh, hits allowed. And then we have the Mariners and A's Nerfy that I just talked about. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if you if you don't think I'm going to have a winning day or you just want to comment your favorite play of the day, go down and do that. $25 is on the line if we don't, don't have a winning day. But I'm feeling good about this one. I'll catch you guys on tomorrow. Peace out.